Another example of graphing an exponential function, we have f of x is equal to one third to the x power. Um, I'm going to start again with the small, with the larger numbers, so three, two, one, zero, and then I'll go ahead and do the negative numbers and evaluate the function at those. All right, so um, f at three is going to be one third cubed, and just in case you forgot your power of a quotient rule, that's going to be the same as one cubed divided by three cubed, and we know one cubed is one, three cubed is twenty-seven. Okay, so this is going to be the point one twenty uh, three comma one twenty seven. Um, at two, that's going to be one third squared, which is one square over three square or one ninth. Okay. And then one is easy, so f at one is going to be one third to the first, which is one third. Okay, so anything to the first power is an identity. F at zero is easy as well. Remember, anything to the zero power except for zero is going to be one. All right, but we're not going to explore zero to the zero. And then we get these negative exponents. Okay, so let me illustrate how that's going to work. So f at negative one is going to be one third to the minus one. Remember, a negative exponent takes the reciprocal of whatever's inside your parentheses. So that's actually going to be three over one. And then instead of a negative, it becomes positive. And that's actually just going to be three f at negative two is going to be one third to the minus two, which is going to be three over one squared, which is nine. And then as expected, the last one's gonna be 27. So we have one over three to the negative three, three over one cubed, which is 27, all right? So we have negative one, three, negative two, nine, negative three, 27. All right, so now let's graph, all right? So negative 327 is way off the charts. It's like somewhere up here, okay? So, um, and I know that's not a good depiction because that's probably more like 13 or 14, but just to get the idea, all right? I'm only gonna, I'm not even gonna worry about this point just because I can't plot it, all right? Two comma nine, let me zoom in a lot just so that way I can plot these points. Um, so negative two nine is gonna be right about here. And then we have negative one three, um, our stationary point on the axis is going to be our zero one. And then we have this one comma one third. Right? So again, I'm gonna zoom in just so that way I can go ahead and plot this. All right, so one one third. I know that's more like a half, but just to exaggerate it. And then one ninth and then one twenty seven. All right, like almost on the axis. All right, and so those are our coordinates. All right, and let's go ahead and graph these by playing connect the dots. All right, and so if I do so, I'm going to do my best to make sure that this is almost on the axis. All right, so it's running parallel to the axis almost. And then it's going to go up exponentially. All right, so that's about what our graph looks like. Um, if I was to ask what the domain of this graph is, well, there's no breaks in the graph and it just keeps going left and right forever. So that's gonna be negative infinity to positive infinity. The range of this graph is going to be anywhere from zero to infinity. All right, so notice it never dips below that axis. So zero to infinity. Um, and then this time we still have the horizontal asymptote y equals zero, but this time it's as x approaches infinity. Okay, not negative infinity. Right. Now, the last thing we're going to do is let's go ahead and check this by using a graphing calculator. Okay, so we have f at x, or y, doesn't matter, is going to be equal to one third to the x. All right, so. All right, and then there's our function. Um, just to plot a few points, just to make sure we had something like negative one comma three, all right? So that looks like it falls on there. Um, we also had, what do we have? Three comma one over 27. Okay, that was a really low point. Um, and let's label those both. So it looks like they're both on the function. Um, we also had the asymptote y equals zero. Okay, so that's on there too. All right, so that's pretty cool that we can go through and just graph this by utilizing um, our analytic techniques but then check it using our technology. 
um, in your graphing calculator, just to remind you that if you have these negative exponents and you're not, and you forget, like if you're on the exam, um, what you could do is, for instance, you could type in um, one third in your calculator, put it in parentheses, and then you can raise it to the, let's say, second power, all right? And then what you can do is you can just turn it into a fraction, okay? On Desmos, you can just hit this. Um, if you have like a TI graphing calculator, what you can do is you can, after you hit enter, you just use the command math, okay? So you hit the math key, and then you just hit enter twice, okay? So math, enter, enter. And what that'll do is that'll turn a, frac a decimal into a fraction. So that'll turn a decimal to a fraction. All right, um, as long as it's a rational number. Okay, now if it's not rational, um, in other words, like, you know, it's pi or something like that, then it's not going to turn it into a fraction. Okay, and it, sometimes with really, really small numbers, it can't turn it into a fraction. But for the most part, um, math enter, enter works really well. All right, so that's just a couple examples of being able to graph these sorts of exponential functions. Now, keep in mind what we did to graph this function two to the x, okay, from the last video. And in the next video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna see what we can do to transform that function and move it along, around um, on the various components based on the rules of transformations that we've seen earlier in the course.